Are you tired of juggling schedules like a circus performer? Leave the chaos behind and say hello to organized bliss with Excel. Whether you are managing a project, planning an event, or coordinating volunteer efforts, this Excel roster will save you time and headaches. Hi there, welcome to Excel Demi, where you can learn to use Excel and solve Excel VBA related problems. I am Ishrak Kader and in today's video, we'll be discussing how to create a roster in Excel. So, let's get started. In this video, I'll show you a step-by-step -step guide on the creation of a roster in Excel. For this tutorial, I'll be using Microsoft Excel 365. You might be wondering what exactly is a roster. In short, a roster is an organized list or schedule that outlines the shift, task, etc. of individuals in a group or organization. Rosters ensure proper allocation of a task, avoids conflicting schedule, and promotes accountability among team members. So, let's make our very own roster from scratch. First of all, we need a source spreadsheet that contains all the relevant information for our roster. In our case, we have the settings worksheet, which contains the months, years, weekends, followed by shift types, shift codes, and lastly, employee name column. Our roster will incorporate all these elements and represent the data in an organized fashion. In the second step, we'll define named ranges, which are the basis of all dynamic operations of the roster. Firstly, we'll define static name ranges for the months and weekends column. A static named range stores the same cell references. This means adding or removing data needs to be done manually. First, I'll select from B5 to B16 range, click the name box, type month underscore list. Press enter and we've defined our first static name range. Similarly, go to the D5 cell, select up to D16, click the name box, type week end, press enter. And that's it, we've defined our two static name ranges. On the other hand, a dynamic named range can automatically adjust its size to include or exclude any newly added or removed data. To name a range dynamically, I'll select from C5 to C16 range, click the Formulas tab. In the Defined Names section, I'll click Define Name. This opens the New Name dialog box. Here, I'll rename it to Year List. In the Refers To field, I'll insert my formula. In this case, we are combining the offset and counter functions. Let's briefly explain how this formula works. The counter function counts the number of non-empty cells in column C of the settings worksheet. While the offset function selects the entire range from the C5 to C16 cells. I'll click OK to close the dialog box and that's it, we've named our years list dynamic named range. In a similar manner, I'll define two other dynamic named ranges for shift codes and employee name. First, I'll select from F5 to F16, go to the Formulas tab, again, in the Defined Name section, I'll click Define Name. In the new name, I'll type shift underscore Codes. In the Refers To field, I'll insert my formula. Click on OK. Lastly, I'll select from G5 to G16 range. Click on Define Name. I'll rename it to Employee underscore List. In the Refers To field, I'll insert my formula. Click on OK. We've created all the name ranges for our roster. Now we can click on the Name Manager option. You can also use the Ctrl plus F3 shortcut key to open the name manager, which shows all the dynamic and static name ranges that we've created so far. In the third step, we'll create the roster format in a new spreadsheet. I'll select from B2 to C4 range. In the alignment section, I'll click Merge and Center. Then I'll click the Borders dropdown and select all borders. This will be a placeholder for our logo. Similarly, 
I'll merge a couple of cell ranges for other column headers. So let me speed up the video a bit. Following this, I'll merge a few more cells and insert borders. Finally, this completes the formatting for our roster. Now we can insert logo and the column headers. In the fourth step, I'll insert my company's logo and header text in designated cells. In my case, I have already copied my company's logo in the clipboard. I'll press Ctrl V to paste it. Feel free to use your own company's logo. Now I'll drag the logo in position, then I'll select the E2 cell, type Roster Off, press Enter. In the E4 cell, I'll type Month, Starting, Date, ending with a colon, press Enter. In the M4 cell, I'll type Start, Date, colon. In the T4 cell, I'll type End, Date, followed by a colon, and lastly, in the AC4 cell, I'll type total days, colon, press enter. This concludes the insertion of company logo and the column headers in their designated positions. In step 5, we'll use data validation to make drop-down list for selecting the month and year. I'll go to the W2 cell, click the data tab, in the Data Tools group, I'll click this drop-down and select Data Validation. This opens the Data Validation dialog box. In the Allow field, I'll choose List. For the Source field, press the F3 key. This brings a list of all the defined name ranges. I'll select the Month list, click on OK, click on OK again, and we can see that we've inserted a drop-down list with all the month names included. Similarly, I'll go to the AC2 cell. In the Data Tools group, I'll go to Data Validation. For the Allow field, I'll choose List. For the Source field, press the F3 key. This time, I'll choose the Year list. Click on OK. OK again. We can see that we've inserted a drop-down with the list of years. Afterward, I'll jump to the W2 cell, click the drop-down and select a random month. I'll choose the month of May. In the AC2 cell, I'll select a year, 2023. Then in the J4 cell, I'll enter a month starting date of 3 to complete the step. In step 6, we'll enter the formula for start date, end date, and total days. I'll begin by going to the P4 cell, press equal, type if error date value. Then I'll select the J4 cell reference, insert ampersand, select the W2 cell reference, again insert ampersand operator, select the AC2 cell reference, close the parenthesis, insert comma, open and close double quotes, close the final parenthesis. Here the date value function converts the cell values into Excel's date format while the if error function handles any errors and prevents unwanted error messages. Lastly, I'll press enter. To format the date correctly, go to the number section and click this arrow. This opens the format cells dialog box. We can also press Ctrl-1 shortcut key to open this dialog box. I'll choose custom and select month, day, year format. Click OK. We can see that our start date is properly formatted. Following this, we'll use a similar formula to get the end date. I'll go to the X4 cell 
and paste my formula. Here we are using the end of month function which returns the last day of the month in the P4 cell. I'll press enter. Now we'll have to format the end date just like we formatted the start date. Go to the X4 cell, press Ctrl1 to open the format cells dialog box. Go to custom and select the month, day, year format. Click OK and we can see that our end date is now formatted correctly. Lastly, for the total days, I'll go to the AF4 cell, press equal, type X4 minus P4 plus 1. Press enter and we get the total days. In the seventh step, we'll add the days and dates into our roster. As you can see, I have already inserted borders into E6 and E7 cells. In the E7 cell, I'll press equal and select the P4 cell reference. Press enter. Here we need to format it correctly as a date. So I'll press Ctrl1 shortcut to open the format cells dialog box. Here I'll choose DD which refers to the date format. Click OK. And we can see that it's been formatted as a date only. Now I'll jump to the F7 cell, press equal, type if. For the logical test argument, I'll select the E7 cell, greater than equals X4. Press F4 to lock the cell reference. For the value if true argument, we want to keep it blank. So I'll enter double quotes. For the value if false argument, I'll type E7 plus 1. Close the parenthesis and press enter. Again, we'll have to format this cell correctly. So I'll press Ctrl 1 to open the format cells dialog box. Go to custom and select DD to format it as a date. Next, I'll drag the fill handle tool to copy the formula all the way across to AI7 cell and insert all borders. That's it, we've entered all our dates. Following this, go to the E6 cell, press equal, type the text function. For the value argument, I'll enter the E7 cell reference. For the format text argument, I'll start double quotes Type three Ds. Close the quotation, then the parenthesis and press enter. Next, use the fill handle tool to drag the formula across the row. Now, press Ctrl 1 to open the format cells dialog box. Go to the alignment tab. Here in orientation, instead of zero, I'll type 90 degrees to change the text orientation. Click OK. Finally, we've added all the days for the corresponding dates. In step 8, we'll bring in all our employee names from the settings worksheet in a dynamic way. So any changes to employees will be updated automatically. I'll begin by selecting the B6 to B7 cells. Click Merge and Center. Then I'll insert all borders. In the formula bar, I'll type the heading Employee. Press Enter. Next, I'll select the B8 to B17 cells. Click the Data tab. In the Data Tools section, I'll click this drop down and go to data validation. This opens the data validation dialog box. For the allow field, I'll choose list. For the source, I'll press the F3 button. Here, I'll select the employee list named range. Click OK. Click on OK again. We've inserted a drop down with the list of all the employee names. Now, I'll head back to the home tab and insert all borders. I can click the drop down and select any employee name I want. Let's choose Jack. Step 9 is similar to that of step 8 and in this step we'll add the starting shift for each employee. Select the C6 and C7 cells, click Merge and Center, then insert Border. Next, I'll select the C8 to C17 cells, add Border, then I'll click the Data tab, in the Data Tools group, I'll click this drop-down and select Data Validation. This opens the Data Validation dialog box. For the Allow field, I'll choose the List option. For the Source, press the F3 key. This brings the named ranges. Here, I'll choose the Shift Code's name range. Click OK. Click OK again and we've inserted a drop-down list with all the shift codes. Go to the C6 cell and enter the column header starting shift. 
press enter. This completes the addition of employee names and starting shift to our roster. In the 10th step, we'll add shift codes based on the starting shift. I'll jump to the E8 cell and paste this formula in the formula bar. Let me briefly explain how this formula works. Here, the first if and or statements check if either the C8 or E7 cell values are blank, in which case it returns a blank value. The second if statement checks if the value in the D8 cell is empty. If the condition is fulfilled, it returns the value in the C8 cell. Otherwise, the index, match, and counter functions work together to return the value from the shift code named range. I'll press enter. Then I'll drag the fill handle tool to copy the formula across the rows. After that, I'll use the fill handle tool again to copy the formula along the columns. It's always helpful to calculate the total number of shifts assigned each day. Let's add this section in step 11. As you can see, I have already added the total day shift employees and total night shift employees row headers. Next, I'll jump to the E19 cell, press equal, type, count if. For the range argument, I'll select the E8 to E17 range, press F4 once, twice to lock in the row references. For the criteria argument, I'll start double quotes, type D, followed by asterisk, close the double quotation, close the parentheses, and press enter. Here, the countif function counts the number of cells in the E8 to E17 range that start with the letter D. The asterisk symbol is a wildcard character that checks for all the values that start with the letter D. I'll insert border, then I'll use the fill handle tool to drag the formula across the rows, all the way to AI19. This gives us the total day shift employees. Now, for the total night shift employees, I'll go to the E20 cell and paste the same formula. I'll make a slight adjustment. Instead of D, I'll replace it with N, so that the COUNTIF function counts the instances that start with the letter N. Press ENTER. I'll insert borders. Then I'll drag the fill handle tool across the rows all the way to AI20 cell. This gives us the total night shift employees. In step 12, we'll track the total number of shifts completed by each employee throughout the month. I have already added the column headers for total day shift and night shift. I'll jump to the AK8 cell, press equal, type count if. For the range argument, I'll select from E8 to AI8, press F4 three times in order to lock in the column references. For the criteria argument, I'll type double quotes, type D, asterisk, close the inverted comma, close the parenthesis, and press enter. Track the fill handle tool to get the total day shifts. Similarly, for the night shifts, I'll go to the AL8 cell and paste the same formula. I'll modify it slightly by changing the D for an N. Press Enter. Then I'll drag the fill handle tool to get the total night shifts. In step 13, we'll add color to the roster so that we can easily differentiate between day and night shifts. To do this, I'll select the E8 to AI8 range, click the Home tab, in the Styles group, I'll click Conditional Formatting. Go to New Rule. This opens the New Formatting Rule dialog box. Here, I'll choose Use a Formula to determine which cells to format option. I'll enter my formula here. Press Equal, type Left, start parenthesis, type E8. Close the parenthesis, press Equal, start double quotes, type N. Close the quotation. Click the Format button. In the Field section, you can choose any color according to your liking. In my case, I'll choose a light shade of gray. Press OK. Press OK again. And we can see that the cells that match the criteria are highlighted in gray. 
Again, we'll apply conditional formatting to highlight the day shifts. So select from E8 to AI8 range, click the Home tab. In the Styles group, go to Conditional Formatting, choose New Rule. Select Use a formula to determine which cells to format option. Here, I'll enter my formula. Equal left start parenthesis E8 close the parenthesis press equal start double quotes type D and the double quotes go to the format button in the field section you can choose any color according to your liking I'll click on more colors this opens an additional colors dialog box I'll go to custom here I'll insert a custom hex code type hashtag 42 e a 86 click ok click ok again we can see that the cells which match our criteria are highlighted in a shade of green to complete this step we'll add coloring to the roster and format the cells to make them more presentable i'll select the b6 and c6 cells in the font section i'll go to fill color you can choose any color according to your liking. Here I'll choose a light shade of blue. Also I'll make the text bold. You can also press Ctrl B shortcut and increase the font size to 12. Similarly I'll format the rest of the roster. This completes the formatting and coloring of our roster. In the final step, I'll go to the roster worksheet. Here we'll add VBA macros to automatically insert new months into the roster. Now I'll enable the developer tab. If it's already visible, then you can skip this step. To enable the developer tab, right click on any of the tabs in the ribbon. Go to customize the ribbon. This opens the Excel Options dialog box. Here I'll check the Developer option and click on OK. Now our Developer tab is visible. Go to the Developer tab. At the top left corner, click on Visual Basic. You can also use the Alt plus F11 shortcut keys. This opens the main window of the Visual Basic editor. Now we have to apply this macro to the entire workbook so I'll paste the code into a module. Go to the Insert tab and select Module. This opens the Module 1 window. Now I'll paste my code inside this window. Let me briefly explain how this code works. Here the Jump to Sheet subroutine looks for specific values in the W2 and AC2 cells. If a match is found, the program activates the worksheet roster and changes the W2 and AC2 cell values to January and 2021, which are the starting month and year in our roster. The Copy to Sheet subroutine creates a copy of the active sheet and renames it based on the W2 and AC2 cell values. One thing to note, for the VBA code to work properly, the worksheet has to be named Roster. In turn, we'll insert a second VBA script. However, this will be inserted in the roster worksheet. So I'll head back to Excel. I'll right-click the roster worksheet and go to the view code. This also brings up the VBA editor window. Next, I'll paste the VBA code inside this window. Now let me briefly go through how this code works. This is a worksheet event code that checks for any changes made to the W2 to AC2 cell ranges. If changes are made, then the program calls the jump to sheet and copy to sheet subroutines. Otherwise, the program exits this subroutine. After that, close the roster window. In the roster worksheet, I'll go to the W2 cell 
and choose a month from the drop-down list. Here I'll select the month of April. We can see that a new worksheet with the month name has appeared. Next I'll choose a suitable year. Let me choose the year 2023. We can see that a new worksheet with the selected month and year names have appeared. That's it, we've created a dynamic roster in Excel. Hopefully, you can use this knowledge to make your very own roster or you can use this roster if you wish. Don't forget to download the practice workbook from the video description. Try it out for yourself. It's a great way to improve your Excel skills. If this video helped you, give it a thumbs up. If you have any queries, suggestions or feedback, leave a comment down below. For more information, you can also visit exceldemy.com to see more helpful full content like this, please consider subscribing to our channel. Hope to see you next time. Bye!